We're moving a long way from the days when we used to think that we could pretend that there was just one stock that, that was uniform and being managed for old targets like the maximum sustainable yield, which used to be the holy grail of fisheries. Now we are realizing that salmon of, in particular need this great diversity of habitats and all the parts have to be working properly. Added to that is the fact that the salmon are increasingly being valued now, not just for their use as a food to, to humans, but also for the importance that they have for sustaining the ecosystems around them. So we're moving into a much more holistic world now when we think about salmon and their management. The healthy environment starts in the mountains and the rivers all the way down to the estuaries and all the way out to the ocean. So uh, the environment is very important and because you, if one of them is out of balance or you know, for whatever reason, over logging or overfishing, it all makes a difference to, to, to that whole ecosystem, the whole environment from the mountains right to, out to the ocean. So, so yeah, so our people have been on the coast for, for thousands of years. There's never enough capacity to deal with, uh, you know, all the, all the management that, that salmon need. And we're not managing salmon per se as much as we're managing people and, and how people impact salmon. We've, we've lost several hundred spawning populations of salmon since the advent of of commercial fishing in British Columbia. We're not necessarily have a good understanding of the full diversity of salmon that are caught in some of our fisheries. And so uh, some populations we know are doing poorly, others we're not monitoring very well. Often you will have different subpopulations that will migrate, for example, at the same time. And you cannot easily distinguish between those in a fishery. You will catch some fish that are just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And if they come from a small stock, which has low productivity, and they're up against it with a very large stock that is the main target of the fishery, they can run into trouble. So we need to maintain this diversity and that, that's similar to a portfolio, an investment portfolio. You maintain a diverse portfolio in order to get a good high average return on, on the stock, so to speak. Where we run into conservation units that are at risk, uh, fishing pressure will have to be reduced to allow those uh, populations, those conservation units to recover. But uh, Allowing the industry a hand in working that out, figuring out what we can do, I think is empowering to them and it also allows us to find the best solutions to address these situations. So if you have a, a really diverse genetic uh, makeup of fish, then you're going to have a much better chance of those uh, species surviving into the long term. They're more adaptable. Uh, the more genetic uh, diversity that you have, they'll be a lot more able to adapt to those changes. We have to make sure that the habitat uh, integrity is maintained. I mean, that's quite critical. And no matter what you do today, you're going to have to have good habitat down the road. And so the integrity of the habitat is key. And one of the issues, again, is water and water protection. And again, groundwater is absolutely critical uh, for maintaining wild salmon, especially in the, the drier interior regions of the Fraser. Uh, you have uh, desert-like conditions there. and. Uh, Many of the streams are, are because of climate change and shrinking glaciers are, are drying up. How well is the ecosystem doing? If uh, wild salmon are doing fine, then probably other things in the ecosystem are doing fine. We know from experiences in other par parts of the world, such as Alaska, that the relative importance of different stocks of fish can change over time. So for example, it, under climate change, which is very much with us and we're seeing all sorts of effects already, there are certain types of stocks which might be better able to withstand these changing conditions than other ones. And so if we lose the diversity, we lose our ability to um, capitalize on different stocks coming into their own as others might fade out in this you know, growing changes. Climate change uh, threatens salmon because they're very vulnerable to temperature and obviously climate change affects both freshwater and ocean climate and conditions. Maintaining a, a diverse base of salmon gives them the best chance to be productive through different types of conditions and to give them the greatest chance to have the adapt to adapt to actual these types of climate changes that are critical for them. The Fraser River, which is the largest producer of salmon in the world in many years, has been getting a lot warmer and those temperatures can cause real hardships to animals that are, f they are essentially cold water fish.